Following on from the recent COP26 summit, it is clear that the world, although at a slower pace than myself and many others would prefer, is moving towards being more environmentally friendly, with the UK trying to lead the charge on the race to net zero. Ingrid Holmes, who is the chair of the country's new Green Technical Advisory Group, announced that this group will oversee the introduction of a new green taxonomy, which will define the requirements to determine how environmentally friendly or sustainable a financial product is, with the core rules set to be in place by the end of 2022. The reason for this is in an effort to tackle the so-called greenwashing or inaccurate ethical claims made on several financial products to this day, and making it easier for us as investors to determine which products are more sustainable for the climate than others. Having a green taxonomy framework is a great step to ensure that there is no misinformation out there on the market. But what if you're an investor that wants to put their money into green products now and you don't want to wait till the end of 22? How would you do that today? In this video, let's understand what green investments are, why you might want to invest in them, and how you can do it today. Although, spoiler warning, it's not as easy as you might think. I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. So what are green investments? Green investments, which are also known as a type of ethical investment, is an investment, whether it be through bonds or equities, is in a product that helps to seek to support businesses or projects that have a positive impact on our natural environment while still trying to make a profit. For example, this could mean that you choose companies that produce clean renewable energy rather than those companies that still practice the use of fossil fuels. So why consider this as an option? The main reason is, is that it can help influence better decisions that positively impact our lovely planet. And we all know that wherever the money goes, that can be a huge influencer. And with the ever presence of the climate crisis, the one way that us investors can help is by putting our money in green investments, thus signaling to the market and governments that us investors are willing to reward companies that do have a positive impact on our climate and deter business decisions that rather harm it. And this type of investing is becoming increasingly more popular amongst investors Data from investment associations shows that investors were pumping in on average £1 billion a month into sustainable and ethical investment funds in the year 2020. This is an increase of 66% from the year previous, and it is projected that this growth will set to continue as investors begin to prioritise the serious effect of the climate crisis on our planet. So how do you invest in green sustainable investments? Now there are two key ways that you can actually do this. The first one being is that you can choose to invest in companies that actively partake in sustainable activities. Now you can do this by choosing to invest in specific green company stocks or by investing in a fund that chooses the green stocks for you. Now selecting a green company stock is probably relatively easier as you can do a quick simple Google search online and you can find loads of companies that have listed the top green investments for 2021 for example and they have done a whole bunch of research for you. However there is still an issue of how can you effectively determine if a company is actually green because in theory it is actually quite a subjective term. Is a company that is actively producing in renewable energy but still produces a lot in oil and gas considered green? Hmm, I'm not too sure. Now, I actually found this really, really difficult to determine, and I can absolutely see why major reform in this sector is needed. There are many terms and metrics that are really just thrown around to try and describe whether a product is green, sustainable, or ethical. But as I mentioned, most of this wording is really highly subjective. And to top it all off, none of these labels or descriptions are regulated, which even just complicates things further. So some of the terms I came across was the Sustainable and Responsible Investment, or SRI, which focuses on investments that tackle ethical, social, and environmental issues. You have the Environmental, Social, and Governance Investing, or ESG. These look at strategies tackling environment, social, and governance related to risk and opportunities. You have Light Green Investing, companies that are actively doing good for the environment and excluding those doing harm. Sustainable investing, which focuses on investing in environmental or socially sustainable issues and help deliver a strong return. And there are many other terms as well, such as ethical investing, impact investing, 
dark green investing, and I'm sure there are many others as well. Now, in some shape or form, all the phrases that I just mentioned sound like they're intended to provide you investments that are sustainable and ethical, although again, these phrases are highly subjective. However, one best way to demonstrate this issue with the classification is an example that I found with the Royal Dutch Shell, which of course is one of the world's largest producers of oil and gas. The company itself is likely to be excluded from an ethical fund due to their involvement with fossil fuels, but they may be included in light green investments for their extensive development in wind and solar energy. Confusing, right? That being said, if you are wanting to invest in green products today, the most popular and most common way is through the ESG investing metric, which stands for environmental, social and governance. Investing through this metric has become increasingly popular over the last few years, as the want to invest in more ethical and sustainable investments has increased. Now, the ESG metric is not a mandatory requirement for financial reports. However, many companies are choosing to include it in their annual report or their sustainable report uh, throughout the year. ESG factors include carbon emissions, air and water pollution, deforestation, data protection and privacy, human rights, bribery and corruption. And there are many more things that they look at. I'll put a link in the description box down below if you want to understand more about ESG and their factors. Now, many investment platforms now have introduced so-called ESG funds that actively choose uh, companies that rate highly on the ESG metric. One example is Vanguard, who actually have quite a few ESG funds, uh, and one being called the ESG Developed World All Cap Equity Index, which has had an average return of about 13% over the last five years, which isn't too shabby. Another example is if you invest through Hargreaves Langsdale, they have about 20 products that are focused on ESG funds, and Money Farm also have a dedicated selection of products under their socially responsible portfolio. And of course, there are many, many other examples that I could explain as well. However, I would encourage you to look into more detail on any fund that is of interest to you. As I mentioned, the definition of what is ethical and what is green is highly ambiguous. So really do look at the details and look at particular companies um, that you'll actually be investing in. Hopefully, as time progresses, things will get easier as the popularity of these products are increasing. And of course, with the introduction of the new green taxonomy set to come in play by the end of 2022, it should also make it a lot easier for us to determine what is actually green against what is not. If you are at all interested, I personally invest in the ESG developed World All Cap Equity Index Fund. Uh, the return on this is actually pretty decent, although do remember that the past performance on a product is no indication of what the future will hold. And when I looked at the portfolio of companies that this fund is actually investing in, um, although I would say that the list of companies is more lean towards what is socially ethical rather than what I would consider uh, a green investment opportunity, uh, I thought it was at least a decent balance for what I could find on the market to this day. And the alternative way, because remember I did say there was two ways that you can actually do this. Um, so one way is obviously investing in so-called green companies. The other one is actually investing in the government green saving bond. Investing in this product means that you'll be contributing towards public spending that help finance green projects, such as funding zero emission buses, funding wind power and hydrogen research as a few examples. You can invest between 100 to 100,000 pounds and your money is locked away for three years. You are guaranteed a rate of interest which is actually fixed for those three years. And when I looked on the website today, it currently stands at 0.65%. I'm not entirely sure if this number changes, but I would suggest that you do double check if you are thinking about investing in this product. So although this rate of return isn't groundbreaking uh, for you as an investor, but if you are someone that is holding a lot of their money within savings accounts and you don't necessarily think you need it within the next three years, this rate is actually quite higher than most savings account rates. So you may want to think about putting your money within a green savings bond rather than holding it into a normal account. They also guarantee the return of 100% of your investment after those three years, which eliminates the capital risk that is normally associated through the regular investment path. Cool, so that is it for this week's episode. Let me know in the comment section down below if green investments is at the forefront of your mind when it comes to your portfolio, and is there some other method that I may have missed from this video that could also help us determine what is actually green and what is not green. Also, if you did find this video incredibly useful, I would appreciate if you smash that like button that does wonders 
for the growth of my YouTube channel. And remember, I release a video every single week, so if you want to keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button as well. See you later. Bye.